Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Caponetta and this is the place where we talk about dog essentials, dog training, only positive reinforcement, health and wellness for dogs, um, tips on that, and rescue awareness. Um, so today we are actually going to talk about hardware that your dog wears when they walk. So this is extremely crucial for most dogs. Um, if you are having a training issue, it's probably because your dog is pulling, um, reactive on leash to other dogs, um, too excited, um, so many different things that they could possibly be doing while they're walking. And you're, if you're watching this video, you're most likely having an issue, um, which is what we wanna fix. So we're gonna talk about proper dog harnesses, collars, leashes, and also the flip side of what we don't really wanna be using, especially if you wanna go positive reinforcement and really change the way that your dog walks if they are being reactive, negative towards other dogs or strangers. Um, you wanna use positive reinforcement because negative um, militant training is not going to help. It's actually going to make the behavior worse. So today we are going to focus on that. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about um, is the operative nerve. Operative nerves, um, come here, Budge. Operative nerves are right here. This is Pajalina. Say hi. Say hi. Yes, thank you. Say hi. All right, no more kisses. We gotta make a video. I'm gonna make you so sweet. Ready? Hey, go focus. Go focus. Go focus. <laughs> so the operative nerve is right around in here in between the shoulder blades. Um, when you engage that nerve and you're pulling back with either like a collar like hers which this is a flat belt collar or a back clip harness wow. anything i know come back up i'll give it to you she doesn't like being without her collar so she gets very upset good girl um so that operative nerve is going to be engaged when you pull from a collar like that or a back clip harness that actually goes and, and it's sitting on the back um, when you engage that nerve, they actually um, want to grip the ground and pull forward. So this is something that they have a really hard time stopping. Um, they, it, it's in their DNA. It is a reflex. They cannot help it. So um, going back to what I said before about the militant training, the negative training, um, you can leash pop, you can yell, you can do whatever you want. You can shove them backwards towards you. Um, it's not going to change the fact that that nerve is being engaged. So if you do have your dog on a regular collar, um, a black back clip harness, or prong collar, um, this is not going to help. I mean, prong collars do work. Um, they are quick fixes They um, because they, they give pain, and that's why your dog is like, oh, I better stop doing that, that really hurts. Whereas, um, you know, when it's a collar or a regular back clip harness, they're like, oh, this is fine, and they just grip the ground, it just feels normal for them. So um, if your dog is experiencing this pulling and you're trying everything you possibly can, um, this video is for you. So we're gonna talk about that. So when you engage that nerve, they can't help it. So what I suggest is a front clip harness. This is an easy walk. It's the only thing I suggest for my clients. Um, it is made by PetSafe. I will link uh, the link below where you could get it on Amazon. Um, they're like in the 20s. There are two different versions of this harness. Um, hers is, this is Opal's, this is a, a glittery one. This is a little bit special. I think this one's a little bit more expensive. So if you want the glitter, you might have to pay like 30 bucks. Um, I just thought she looked so cute in it because she does. This one has a little bit more padding in it, um, aside from having glitter. So the ones that have a little bit more padding, I think they're in the $23, $24 range. So the other one is uh, about $20 and it is a little bit thinner. Um, it's still really great, but if your dog does um, walk often or play often with other dogs and just is in the harness a lot more than any other dog, uh, I do suggest the one that's a couple bucks more just because there's extra padding and you don't want any rubbing underneath the armpits or anything like that. Super helpful. So again, this is the easy walk. So as you can see, we have the, the clip the ring that's going to be clipped to your leash right up in front. So this is where the chest would go. So this moves, it's it's similar to a martingale, it's the martingale effect where it gets tighter. So if this is her chest and she pulls, it's gonna pull this way and it's not gonna get extremely tight but it's going to definitely get a little bit thinner. Um, it's going to actually suck in a little bit so um, if she did try to get out of it, it's going to kind of just hold her in a little bit more. She's not gonna have as much slack, um, which is why they do that. So that clip is on, that ring 
is on the front of the chest. This goes over the back and this goes underneath the armpits. Um, a lot of clients will tell me this is super confusing in the beginning when they first receive it in the mail. What I always tell my clients to remember is that they all come, as you can see, two of these are glitter and one is not. So one is just plain purple. The one that's plain um, or the odd color out, that's the one that you unclip. You never touch the glitter. So what I always say is never touch the glitter, only touch the purple. So um, when you're unclipping and clipping on, you should be only touching this one. So it's going underneath the, the armpits. So it goes like this. So you should be holding it up. The ring should be on the bottom, over the head, clip under the armpits. It's really easy once you get it and once you remember that tip because then you're gravy. So Oakley's is actually blue, across the chest and over his back and then underneath it's black. So it only unclipped the black. So that's something to really remember. So the martingale that I was speaking about earlier that's on the harness, this is what a martingale collar looks like. This is Opal's as well. So I took it off her neck just now and she's running around naked. Um, so this is, if you don't know what a martingale is, it actually started a long time ago. They made them mostly for greyhounds and other dogs that have really, really skinny um, heads that meet their neck. So it's like there's no differentiation between where their ears are. So the ears don't really stop it because the head is so thin. So greyhounds have those really skinny heads. So they were getting out of their collars nonstop. So they actually came up with this. Whereas if this is high up on the neck and when this pulls, it gets tight, but it doesn't choke them. It just gets tight enough where they can't get out and it won't lift over their head. That is key. This is safety. This is not pain. This is very different. So I like to clarify that. Um, <clears throat> they have a bunch of different types of um, martingales on Amazon. I actually got this one on Amazon. If you can see, this one's mermaid theme, and um, she has a matching um, leash, which I absolutely love because I think she just looks adorable in it. And um, so that is what this is. This is a martingale, and that's the same effect that you have on the easy walk, so they don't slip out. Um, how I use these two together or even just a flat belt collar, when you do wear the easy walk, your dog, unless they are super burly in their chest and they have like weight on them, um, you are going to need to attach a, um, a collar of some sort. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's attached to the neck. Um, attach it so that when the dog is pulling, which they shouldn't in this, so let's say that this is how the dog looks. You're going to actually attach both of these together. So this is gonna really give you a lot of safety. So this is the neck and this is the chest. Um, the leash that you're using is actually going to clip to both. We do this for two reasons. Um, the first one is safety. This way they are never going to slip out. It's really hard to actually get out of a harness that has a martingale attachment on front and a, a collar in general. So um, slipping out of both would be really, really difficult for them. So that's why I do that. If you do the easy walk by itself, they could slip out because they're gonna push their shoulders through. But if they have a collar, it's not gonna allow that harness to actually go over. Um, so that is something to take into account. Um, I think safety is number one in my book. That's why we do what we do and why we wanna keep our dogs safe, especially when walking. We don't wanna lose them. The second reason for having the collar and the harness. Hi, sweetie. Hi. The second reason for having the harness and the collar is um, because if you have a skinnier dog um, on the chest, um, when you pull and you just, like let's say you have the leash on, right? And um, they are pulling a little bit forward, it's gonna pull this way. If it's too big on them, it might it might come below the shoulder blades, which you don't want, because then they're not gonna be able to walk comfortably. And you want it to be more so up on their chest, not by their shoulder blades. Um, so, you know, being comfortable, but also when that leash is on and they go a little bit in front of you, it's gonna actually turn to the back because there's just not enough weight for your dog in the front because of this martingale effect. It's actually gonna turn and then you're gonna get that freedom reflex, that, that operative nerve reflex again because it's now going towards the back of the dog and engaging that nerve. So you wanna keep this as, as close to the chest as possible, like right underneath the chin. That's really where it should be in the collar, it keeps it there. Um, if you are going to use a martingale with this, um, try and make sure that the loop, the martingale loop itself isn't too big because then you're gonna get all this slack um, and then it's gonna pull again. So um, a flat belt collar, even a martingale that's like a little bit skinnier would be perfect for this. 
Um, so these are the only things that I suggest, suggest for my clients because we have a lot of pullers. We have a lot of dogs with exuberant personalities. Um, one of the biggest issues that we have for the dogs that have reactivity towards other dogs or strangers is that when they're on um, prong collars, they're getting pain. So every single time a stranger or dog comes around, they're getting pulled and they're getting, they're getting pain and that's associated with strangers and dogs. So we don't want that. We want positive reinforcement. We want them to think that strangers and dogs are the best thing ever. We want treats, we want praise. We don't want pain. So prong collars, throw them away. No go, it's not gonna help your dog get better and it's not, uh, the walk is for them. So why would you wanna give them pain on something that, you know, during, during an experience that's supposed to be for them? So that's why we don't do prong collars. They don't help and it's not fun for your dog. Um, even if they look like they're comfortable, they're not. They got prongs on their necks. And even when they're walking and they see that stranger or their dog, if they're on a flat belt collar or they're on a back clip harness, that nerve is also going to be engaged because they're going to be like moving forward a little bit because they are being reactive to what they're seeing. So when they do that, that nerve is actually getting engaged. It's actually making them more... Um, I never use the word aggressive because I don't believe that dogs are aggressive unless they are loner dogs. They don't want to be with people. They don't want to be with dogs. They find no kinship with anybody. Um, they actually are you know, becoming more assertive and they're getting more worked up when that nerve is engaged because they actually have this, this energy to move forward and they're pulling you with them. So they're feeling that weight. It's almost, I actually explained this to a client the other night and it was something that just kind of popped in my head. I, I find it similar to when you were a kid and someone said something about you and you were like, oh, hold me back to your friends and your friends are holding you back, but you feel all this strength to like pull forward and you're feeling tough. And that's exactly what happens when that nerve gets engaged. Flat belt collars, like the one that Pudge wears, it's really just one ring and it has um, the metal ring in the front to attach to a leash. Those are kind of dangerous for walking, especially um, if your dog is reactive. It's super easy to slip out of those, as you can see. Slipping out is super easy. Um, there's nothing really attached to her when the martingale is on. It's really hard to actually um, pull that off your head. So um, if you are going to walk your dog, I highly suggest not doing it on a flat belt collar. There's Opal. <laughs> Hi, blind baby. Hand on my little blind baby, you good girl. Um, flat belt collars uh, as well um, are a problem for smaller dogs and some bigger dogs. Um, if you don't know, a lot of smaller dogs have really weak tracheas. Um, and when you pull on a felt belt collar like this, or even a martingale for a long period of time, if that's what you're walking on, you really shouldn't walk a dog on a martingale um, long term. I mean, if you're just going out the door and just doing a quick pee or poop, fine. But if you're going for a long walk and your dog is a puller, I'd stay away from the flat belt and really go for a harness that's away from the neck because you can really damage the trachea. And that's really, I don't, I mean, unless you spend like, I think $5,000 to have trachea surgery, it's not gonna happen. Um, and then your dog's gonna be, you know, wheezing for the rest of its life. So that's never fun. Um, so basically, uh, what we really wanna get across to everybody today is that hardware for your dog is extremely important and it should not be taken lightly. You should find something that your dog is super comfortable in and walks better in. We wanna make dogs better. We want them to enjoy their walk. Um, and the easy walk I find is the best option. There are tons of other front clip harnesses out there. Just make sure that the make of them is going to work properly so it's not pulling all over the place and that it's properly sized to your dog's chest. This is huge. Um, I had one client who, um, who constantly would chew out of his harness, out of his easy walk while we were walking. So dad really needed to find something a little bit more industrial. Um, so he found one, I think on Amazon, it was, it's like a tactical gear type one, but it does have the, the ring in the front, same concept. So whatever you guys wanna do, whatever harness you find that works, just make sure it's a front clip and that it's durable and that it's gonna stay in the front on the chest and that you can even um, connect it to that collar as well. So you know that your dog is one, safe, and two, isn't gonna have that reflex um, engaged, which is, which is the number one thing we wanna worry about when we're walking with our dogs. Um, how I teach walking most of the time, hello Opal, um, is there's two different types of walking. Um, I don't really use the word heel, I just say with me, and I, I just set a precedent for, for our dogs that we walk with that when they're close to me and I'm choked up on the leash and it's, it's tight to me, and they're right next to my left hip, that now we're walking and we're walking a faster pace, and this is not 
for sniffing or for pooping or peeing. This is like, we're, we're getting exercise, we're on the move, we got somewhere to go. Um, so they're very aware that this is the first type of walking and then the second type of walking is um, when you're giving them more slack on the leash, they're able to be in the grass and you're not moving, you're letting them do their thing. Um, you know, this is the type of walking that you do when uh, you don't have anywhere to be, the walk is for them, you need them to go to the bathroom, um, it's for, you know, mental stimulation, this and that. So they have a little bit more leeway. So when you're walking and you really wanna go somewhere, they should know the difference between with me and go do your own thing. Um, and I think this is really helpful because there's a line of communication there. Your dog knows what's expected of him or her and isn't like super surprised when all of a sudden you're pulling them and you know jolting them along. Um, what I do, um, I suggest these types of leashes. I like the ones that are flat like this, not the ones that are thicker rope. Um, they make this, what I'm about to teach you, very hard. Hi, Oakley. Give me a kiss. No, this is your leash. He's very excited. He thinks we're going somewhere, but we're not. Is this yours? Is this yours? I know you're a good boy. I know you wanna lay down again. Come on, lay down. Thank you, good boy, good boy. So what I learned my very first day of working at the SPCA, the shelter in Eatontown, New Jersey, um, is this tact right here. Um, if you do this, you'll never lose a dog ever in your life, even if you fall, even if they drag you. Um, so you take the leash like this, you push it through like this, you make a loop, put your wrist through, tighten. It does not hurt, it's not on my wrist bone, nothing is painful, and I have this, and now I have two hands. So if I'm texting, if I'm picking up poop, if I'm um, doing anything, you know, something's going on, um, I have two hands to do stuff. Um, these are my favorite, this one's thinner. Um, they make thicker ones if your dog is a bigger puller. Oakley's a very, very good walker. Um, mainly because of his easy walk, so I don't need the thicker one, and this one's pretty durable. So nylons are definitely my favorite. Um, the four-foot leashes I don't suggest for a smaller dog like Pudge um, because she's so low to the ground, so you're actually like losing feet just from her size alone. So if you have a smaller dog, I suggest more of like the six-foot, um, but Oakley's good on the four. It's it, you're definitely gonna your dog's gonna be way closer to you. So it depends on what kind of dog you have and what kind of walking you do mostly. If you like to give your dog a little bit of slack um, so they can pee or poop, um, then definitely go with a six foot. But if you like a four foot because you like to keep your dog close and you live in the city or um, somewhere where it's cl close quarters or you have like a service dog or a, a, th a therapy dog, definitely go for a shorter leash so they're much closer to you and there's less slack for you to have to wrap around. Um, what I do when I'm walking with our dogs, um, hi Oakley, I know, I know you're so excited. When I'm, when I'm wearing the leash, I have it like this. And if, I, if I'm walking, um, we're walking to walk, you know, we're, we're on the move, we're going somewhere, um, I will have it like this, hi. I will have it like this and I'll wrap it and then have it here. It's obviously going to be attached to the dog and I'll have it across my chest. And I actually use this hand um, to kind of keep them close to me. So I'll actually keep my, um, my left hand close to my hip and use my arm muscle to kind of keep them close in the beginning because they sometimes like to be like, ooh, I can walk further. Um, and they pull a little bit, even on the, you know, even on a, a specific harness that isn't meant for pulling. But, um, you know, once you kind of give them that expectation, this is where you're supposed to be, you're good to go. Um, another thing I'll do is I'll loop it through my hand and I'll actually put treats in my palm and I'll kind of hold them with my fingers. And I actually will, as I'm walking, I kind of let the dog smell the treats to keep them close to my thigh. Um, this works great. Um, we also work on the look command. Um, we do this way before we even hit the streets. I usually do my basic obedience with them in the house when there's like less distractions and stuff before we hit the streets. Um, so then I know that they are good at the look command so I can expect them to look at me while we are walking and I have that treat as a reward and it's quick. I don't have to fumble in my pocket for um, treats or anything like that. Walking like this with treats in your hand makes it a lot easier and especially with the leash cross your body. I am not one of those trainers that's a, stup uh, a super stickler on uh, which side your dog should be on. I just find that the leash in my right hand, which is my strong dominant hand, and the dog on my left side is for the best. That's also where I keep my treat pouch. So I think it, it all comes down to comfort. Um, 
these are really awesome tips for you if you're struggling with your dog, um, if you are struggling with a reactive dog on leash, whether it be strangers um, or other dogs in general, um, barking, growling, being upset, um, not wanting to walk, anxiety in general, I'm gonna do another um, longer video on that because that um, is one that we really wanna focus on. We wanna really change the way our dogs feel about walking in general, so keep a lookout for that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give us a like below. Um, we love to hear your feedback and to hear if any of the tips that we gave you today will help you out. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching Oakley snuggle with me and I hope that some of the tips I gave you today will really help you with your dog and walking. Um, so as always, class dismissed.